Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have x cubed plus y cubed plus 3xy equals 1. And x does not equal negative 1. Under those conditions, we're going to find y in terms of x. Since we have two variables, we can find, hopefully, y in terms of x. So x does not equal negative 1 is an important condition. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this cubic equation first. And when you check out the graph, you're like, uh-oh, what is going on here? Aren't we supposed to get a curve, like cubic? Why is this linear, right? Okay, so let's see what is going on. Let's check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the original problem. It is x cubed plus y cubed plus 3xy equals 1. And we're supposed to find the y value in terms of x. And x does not equal negative 1. So, let's see what we can do. First of all, x cubed plus y cubed is a sum of two cubes. So we can go ahead and factor this. And we've done a similar problem before, by the way. If I can find it, I'll share the link here and down below. So, we can go ahead and turn this into x plus y cubed minus 3xy times x plus y. And remember, this is an identity we, uh, we use to solve cubic equations, and it's also very, uh, you know, it's used in different situations. So that is the x cubed plus y cubed part. Let's go ahead and add 3xy to this and set it equal to 1, but let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides and set the whole thing equal to 0. So we got this interesting cubic expression. Let's go ahead and factor it by grouping. And by grouping, it makes sense if we put these two together because they both have 3xy in them, so we can make a common factor. And then the rest is just going to follow. And the rest is just a cube minus 1, so it's like difference of two cubes because 1 can be written as 1 cubed. Make sense? Okay, so that's the formula we're going to use, but let's go ahead and write it this way first. x plus y cubed minus 1 cubed. This is a piece of it. And then minus 3xy, we take negative 3xy out, so it's going to be x plus y minus 1. We need the negative 1 here because this is positive and we took out a negative, so we have to negate it. Now, if you look at these two terms, it's factorable by difference of two cubes, and this is going to be one of the factors. Great. So if you are having a hard time factoring this, you can go ahead and call this a, and then just work on the factoring of a cubed minus 1, which will be a little easier. But here's what it looks like. x plus y minus 1, so that's the first factor. And the second factor, remember, a cubed minus b cubed can be written as a minus b multiplied by a squared plus ab plus b squared. Makes sense? So the second factor is going to be a squared plus ab, by the way, x plus y is a here, x plus y plus b cubed, which is 1. And then minus 3xy times x plus y minus 1. Now, after doing the grouping, we get another common factor. That's the idea behind uh, factoring by grouping. Now you have a common factor, so we can take it out, x plus y minus 1. And then the rest is going to be, we can go ahead and expand this, x squared plus y squared plus 2xy, that's how I usually expand it, plus x plus y plus 1 minus 3xy. Because we already took out a common factor, we don't um, need to write it. x plus y minus 1. Now what can I do with the second factor? First of all, these two are like terms. They like each other, so we can go ahead and put them together like x squared plus y squared minus xy plus x plus y plus 1. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Don't forget that, right? We're trying to solve y in terms of x, so this is going to give us a lot of different options. Now, and of course, we're looking for a real scenario here. Even though I didn't say that, hopefully it's understood when I said y in terms of x, it is real. Anyways, what am I going to do with these factors? Set each one equal to 0. This one is fairly easy, so we're going to deal with that later. Let's go ahead and set this factor equal to 0. When you set that equal to 0, you get x squared plus y squared minus xy plus x plus y plus 1 equals 0. Now, how do you solve for x and y here? There's one equation, there are two variables, 
And this is not a Diophantin equation. So we're not necessarily looking for integer or rational solutions. How do we solve this type of equation? There must be something special about it, right? And it's not always easy to see, but let me tell you something. A general strategy, if you're dealing with math competitions or any type of Olympiads, you should be familiar with this. And this is how it is. We can turn this into a sum of squares. Hopefully we can, because that's going to give us um, solutions or non-solutions, whatever. So here's what we're going to do. Again, this doesn't come easy. Uh, you just have to practice it. Multiply everything by 2. And then uh, split it up. For example, I can pick x squared plus y squared minus 2xy from here, which is a perfect square. Then I have x squared left. I can put that up with 2x and then just add 1 to it. That's another perfect square. And now what I have left is just another perfect square. And everything is perfect. Everything is awesome. Okay. Y squared plus 2y plus 1 is what is left over. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Of course, this doesn't always work. If it does, it does. So now we have x minus y squared plus x plus 1 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 0. Unless you're looking for integer solutions, you know, you have to do something special like this to get real solutions. Now, we have the sum of squares equals 0. If x and y are real, which they are, then each of these numbers have to equal 0. Otherwise, you can't get 0 by adding squares because squares cannot be negative. Great, so this has to be 0, this has to be 0, and this has to be 0. And that implies x equals y equals negative 1. But we do know that x does not equal negative 1. We don't care about y at this point, but x cannot equal negative 1. Therefore, y cannot equal negative 1 either. So this case is eliminated. Too bad. At least we know that we're not going to be able to proceed with this, so we have to go with the other equation, which is a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and set that equal to 0. We have x plus y minus 1 equals 0, and then x plus y equals 1. But remember, what we're trying to do, let's not lose focus, we're trying to solve for y in terms of x. So I can just isolate y here, and I'm going to be getting y equals 1 minus x. And what is that? That is actually a linear function, y equals 1 minus x. Let's go ahead and get back to the graph because I don't have any other graph to show you. This is the only graph. And this kind of explains the linearity. That's an interesting word, by the way. The linearity of our graph because basically what you're looking at is y equals 1 minus x. Of course, negative 1 comma negative 1 is a point, but Desmos does not show that, unfortunately. Too bad. I don't know why, but it just doesn't show it. It's actually part of the equation, but anyways. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow. I'll see you soon with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.